Hi, I'm Kubis van Rensburg. Join me now for Capturing Glory. We're going to go right into the Word of God and you're going to be blessed. It's time for the church to come out of the closet and become visible. You are the city, you are set on a hill, you are the light of the world. Why do you pray? Do you pray to get results? Do you pray to see the hand of God in motion? Do you pray to get an answer? Or do you pray out of religious duty? I didn't say Christian duty. I say religious duty. Like Muslims, Buddhists, Shintoists, Hindus, Hare Krishnas. All religions pray. Now if I pray, I want to see God move. Otherwise, I'm going to work at the car. Why do I pray if I'm not going to get results? Matthew 5, 6 says, I want to write it on the board again. Blessed. Now remember, there's a lot of blesseds there in, in Matthew chapter 5. But verse 6 said, Blessed is he who are hungry or who hunger and thirst after righteousness. What will happen to them? They will be filled. Thank you. Now, how do you get filled? By eating and drinking. So blessed is he that hunger and thirst after righteousness. So the thing that you're going to eat and drink is righteousness. And then you will be filled. But then Romans 14 and 17 says the following. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not eat and drinking but it is righteousness is that right peace and joy tonight in the Holy Ghost Matthew chapter 6 as from verse 25 right through to verse 34. He says, Take no thought, therefore, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? But seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And then he says, And all these things shall be added unto you. In verse 32 of Matthew chapter 6 he says, after all these things do the heathen seek. They seek, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What car shall we drive? What house can we buy? What business can we start? That's what the heathen nations seek. But it goes on to say, but your heavenly Father knows very well that you need these things. The stuff that the world wants, God says, you need because you are my child and the universe belongs to our God. It doesn't belong to some worldly system. Come on, come on. It belongs to our God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For God has created it, man. It's God's earth. It's God's world. It's not the devil's. But the only way you're going to get it is by seeking the kingdom. Now, what is the kingdom? It's not eating and drinking. It's righteousness, peace, joy, and the Holy Ghost. So seek the kingdom and its righteousness, which is in that, and all things that the heathen want will be added unto you. I just want to read this scripture. Proverbs 21, 21. It's easy to remember. He who earnestly seeks and craves righteousness will find life in addition to righteousness. <laughs> Come on, I'm trying to get to that scripture. God says, all things whatsoever people desire, I'm going to add it to you if you seek the kingdom and his righteousness. So he says, if you earnestly crave, I mean, that's a desire, that's a stuff that you can't stop, after righteousness, in addition to righteousness because you are now seeking after right. In addition, God will give you life. James 5, 14 and 15 says, The prayer of a righteous man availeth much. 
King James says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. King James, uh, Amplified Bible, the earnest, heartfelt, continuous prayer of a righteous man will make tremendous power available, which is dynamic in its working. So there's dynamite power available that will work for you if you are righteous. Not if you're a Christian. If my heart condemn me, God is greater than my heart. If my heart condemn me not, so I must have no condemnation. If there's no condemnation, then have I boldness. Whatsoever I ask, I receive. Now I say, eternal Father in heaven, help the church to come to a place where we know when we pray we are righteous. That will help us because we have no condemnation to have boldness and whatsoever we ask we receive. The boldness we discussed out of Hebrews 4, 14 through 16 and Hebrews 9, 10 verses 19 through 21. We can go boldly to the throne of grace. Then we discussed Mark 11 verse 22, 23 and 24. It says, whosoever shall speak to the mountain, shall have whatsoever he says. Then he must believe in his heart that those things he says will come to pass without doubting. I just want to write it down. The word doubt is the word double, which refers to our thoughts. Now the Bible says in James chapter 1 verse 8, such a double-minded man must not expect to receive anything from the Lord. So if I'm double-minded, it means I've got two thoughts at the same time. I'm praying for one thing, I'm thinking another thing. That makes me not to be bold because I don't know what I'm really asking. I'm not bold because I feel condemned. Why do I feel condemned? Because there's two thoughts running in my mind. Why are there two thoughts running in my mind? Because I'm not single-eyed on righteousness in the kingdom of God. Therefore, I don't get the addition of all the things that God wants to give me. Romans chapter 8. Verse 31 tonight. What then shall we say to all this? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who can be our foe if God is on our side? Verse 32. He who did not withhold or spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all. Now, that is talking about Jesus Christ dying on the cross. Now, when Jesus died on that cross of Calvary, listen to this. 2 Corinthians 5.21, and that's what we laid a lot of emphasis on last night. God made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to become sin for us. So that we can now be made, not our we can be made. We can get to the place. We can now be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So it's because of the finished work of Christ on the cross that I can now become righteous. It doesn't say I'm righteous. I'm justified. So when I meet Jesus, I'm justified. So all my past sins are gone. It's just if I have never sinned. I've got a clean slate. I'm not a sinner. I'm a Christian. So I've got initial righteousness, but I haven't got a life of righteousness. I've got to step into the promises of God and realize that now, if I'm born again, what happens? I see the kingdom. John chapter 3. Then I enter the kingdom. Then I become fit for the kingdom. Come on, there's stages. First of all, the kingdom of God is upon you. Then I see it. Then I enter it. Then I become fit for it. And then Luke 17, 21, the kingdom of God is within me. Okay, so I've got to grow into righteousness. I've got to follow after righteousness. I've got to seek after righteousness. And when I get to that place of righteousness, I become a man whose prayers are answered. And all things are just added unto me. Will he not also with him freely and graciously Give us all other things. If God didn't spare his son, but had him nailed to that cross, what will be too much for God to give you? What is a house in comparison with the life of the son of God dying on the cross? In comparison with the fact that Jesus Christ died. If God didn't spare his own son but gave him up. How much more will he freely give us all other 
things. Thank you, Lord. I'm taking it. Verse 33. Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? When it is God who justifies. That is, who puts us in right relationship to himself. Who shall come forward and accuse or impeach those whom God has chosen? Will God who acquits us? Okay, verse 34. Who is there to condemn us? Will Christ Jesus, who died, or rather who was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of God, actually pleading as he intercedes for us? Verse 35. Who shall ever separate us from Christ's love? Shall suffering, affliction, tribulation, calamity, distress, persecution, hunger, destitution, peril, or sword, even as it's written, for thy sake we are put to death all the day long. We are regarded and counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet, amidst all these things, we are more than conquerors and gain a surpassing victory through him who loved us all things no matter what it is god said i want to give it to you no matter what the circumstances no matter what the situation but you got to understand that at the right hand of the father there's jesus so nobody can condemn you because you've got an intercessor john chapter 16 verse 7 reading the amplified However, I am telling you nothing but the truth when I say it is profitable, it is good, it is expedient, it is advantageous for you that I go away. Because if I do not go away, the comforter, the counselor, the helper, the advocate, the intercessor, the strengthener, the standby, that is the Holy Spirit in short, <laughs> will not come to you into close fellowship with you. But if I go away, where to? To the Father. I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you. And when he comes, oh God help, when he comes, he will convict and convince the world and bring demonstration to it about sin and about righteousness and about judgment. He says, when the Holy Spirit comes, that's the one we said tonight will help you to live a righteous life. If the Holy Spirit comes, this is what he will convict and convince about. Sin, righteousness, and judgment. Now, stick with me for a minute. About sin, because they do not believe. Now, we're talking about receiving answers to our prayers. What does Mark eleven twenty two 22 says? If I pray, I must believe without doubting. What does James say? If I doubt, I'm double-minded. And a double-minded man is unstable and will not receive anything. So what is unbelief and doubt then? No, 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 no. No, Kubas. Sin is smoking, drinking, swearing, cursing, sleeping around. That's sin. No, 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 no. That's just attributes of sin. Sin is one word, unbelief. Come on. The Bible says in Romans, that same chapter, anything that is not of faith is sin. So if I do a thing and not believing it, I'm sinning. What does it say? Of righteousness because I go to the? That's Romans 8 there. <laughs> Come on. That's Romans 8 there, verse 31 to 34. Who can accuse you? Who can condemn you? Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. What is it that the Holy Spirit will convict you about when Jesus is at the right hand of the Father? That you can be righteous. Of judgment. Because the ruler, the prince of this world, Satan, is judged and condemned and sentence already is passed upon him. So give no place to the devil. How do I give him place? With an unrenewed mind. How is my mind unrenewed? If I walk in darkness like the unbelievers. So Joel chapter 2, 28 says, In the last days, says God, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So if that outpouring really hits you, and if we really go for it, the thing that will come to us is righteousness. No accusation, no condemnation. No unbelief, but pure trust in God. No doubt, no condemnation, no accusation. The prayer of a righteous man. If I then pray, tremendous power is released. 
So with that in mind, Isaiah 45. Man, this is great stuff. Verse 2. I will go before you and level the mountains to make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut asunder the bars of iron. Is there anybody that feels, oh God, I need it now? So that's for you. I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that you may know that it is I, the Lord. Anybody that says, oh Lord, I need that now. Verse 5, I am the Lord and there is no one else. There is no God beside me. I will gird and arm you though you have not known me. That men may know from the east and of the rising of the sun and from the west and the setting of the sun that there is no God beside me. I am the Lord and no one else is he who says, oh, I want to know that God, man. Verse 8, here it comes. Let fall in showers. You heavens from above. Here comes the revelation. Let the skies rain down righteousness. Okay? The pure, spiritual, heaven-born possibilities that have their foundation in the holy being of God. Let the earth open and let them, that is the earth, sprout forth salvation and let righteousness germinate and spring up together so now he comes and says now the holy ghost is also mentioned as rain in the bible a couple of now it says let it rain what must it rain righteousness what is righteousness heavenly possibilities which are founded in god almighty so how will I get this heavenly possibilities by the reign of righteousness? He said, let the earth open and let there be germination of righteousness. Now how can righteousness reign and then how can the righteousness then sprout? Rain is supposed to sprout the seed that's in the ground. But in this context, he says, the rain is also the seed, is also the thing that will grow. So, I must get the rain of righteousness, which will cause a germination of righteousness, which will cause a growth in righteousness, which will cause heavenly possibilities at my availability so that I can get all things added to me whatsoever I ask. And oh, but Kubis, it's normally so when rain falls, you see the water drifting away. You know, when rain pours, you see how yeah, the earth just drinks in the water. So Genesis 1. God formed man out of the dust of the earth. God breathed into him the spirit of life. Man stood up a living soul. So let all the earth open up. He's not talking about this place you're standing on. And if you get that revelation, you're going to understand the book of Isaiah, where all the earth shall be filled with the glory, where all the earth together shall see the glory of the Lord, where all the earth shall shout, where all chapter after chapter in Isaiah talk about the earth referring to you and not the place you're walking on to. Now verse 10. As the rain come down from the heaven... But waters the earth that you and me, and make that earth that you and me, to bring forth and sprout that you and me, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, that's me and you. Verse 11, let's see if I'm right. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void without producing any effect being useless, but it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose, and it shall prosper in the thing yes. for which I send yes, it. Yes. Now it says, the rain that comes down. Now we discussed what is the rain in Isaiah year? Righteousness. 
Where's righteousness? In the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is described as rain. Righteousness is described as rain. So this must be, the Holy Ghost must be also the spirit then of righteousness. So if the, the rain is poured out, he says, so is my word. When my word comes and the earth opens up for the word. So James chapter 1, receive with meekness the implanted word. What is the word seed? Where is seed planted? In the earth. So the word is seed implanted in the earth. That is me. So shall my word be. So the word is implanted in me. And what does it have the power to do? To save my soul. What did Isaiah 45 said? So if the, the righteousness germinate, it will bring forth salvation in the earth. So what's going to be saved? Me. Not just my spirit born again. Not just my soul saved. But now earth. Hebrews 4. Verse 12. For the word that God speaks is alive and full of power. Making it active, operative, energizing and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of the soul, of life, and the immortal spirit, and of the joints and marrow of the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts. Verse 13. And not a creature exists that is concealed from his sight, but all things are open and exposed, naked and defenseless to the eyes of him whom we have to do. That's the word. Yeah. Inasmuch as we have a great high priest who is already ascended and passed through the heavens, Jesus, Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand, to sympathize, and have a shared feeling with our weaknesses and infirmities and liability to the assaults of temptation, but one who has been tempted in every respect as we are, yet without sinning. Let us then fearlessly, confidently, boldly draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners, that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good time for every need, appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when we need it. Hallelujah. So I'm asking you one more time, how, why do you pray? Can you see how the circle gets completed here in the righteousness, the boldness, the no condemnation, the no accusation, the no unbelief, the no doubt, you know, and just knowing that what it is that we must seek after. So what must we do, Kubus? Repent. Because but repent is for sinners. No. The word repent means change your mind. I was there. Chapter 5, verse 15. I will return to my place. What did Jesus say? You can be glad, John 16, what we discussed tonight. You can be glad that I'm going away, where I'm coming from. Because if I don't go, you're not going to get the Holy Ghost. Okay, so he says, I will return to my place. Until they acknowledge, that means repent, their offense and their guilt and seek my face. Now the Bible says very plainly, in Romans chapter 6, in 1 Corinthians 15, one man's offense caused all to fall in sin. How much more the obedience of one will bring us life. So Adam, what was his greatest sin? He offended God. After two days, verse 2, he will revive us, that we may live before him. Let us be zealous to know the Lord. For his going forth is prepared and certain as the dawn. And he will come to us as the rain. As the latter rain that waters the earth. God himself will come to us as rain. When? When we repent from our offenses. What will happen? We will be in his presence. I want it. The presence of almighty God. He says you will live there. He will revive you. In other words, you will get a revival. 
He says, but you got to confess and acknowledge if you've been offended. And then what will happen? He will come to Israel. What's the rain? Righteousness, Holy Ghost, the Word. Isaiah 10 verse 12. Sow for yourself according to righteousness. Reap according to mercy. Break up your uncultivated ground. That means repent. Break up your uncultivated ground for it's time to seek the Lord, to inquire for and of Him, to require His favor. Till He comes and teaches you righteousness and reigns His righteousness of salvation upon you. Come, you must get it. King James Bible says, Till He come and reign righteousness upon you. So why do I seek the kingdom and righteousness? What do I get? Righteousness. Job chapter 8 verse 5. If you will seek God diligently and make your supplication to the Almighty, then if you are pure and upright, surely He will bestir Himself for you and make your righteous dwelling prosperous again. And though your beginning was small, yet your latter end will greatly increase. Verse 21. He will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with joyful shouting. Hey guys, please remember to click the subscribe button on your screen so that we can inform you when we're uploading more content. And we have a full library of content to be uploaded, so you're going to be blessed by that. Remember to click subscribe. Bless you.